The Y-12 National Security Complex in Oak Ridge is really unlike any place on Earth. It's a high security nuclear weapons facility owned by the Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration. But it doesn't build nuclear weapons from beginning to end. In fact, it doesn't even build parts for new nuclear weapons, and it hasn't done that since the 1990s. What Y-12 does today is it stores the U.S.'s stockpile of bomb-grade uranium, and it refurbishes and modernizes parts of existing nuclear weapons. But actually, that's only part of what Y-12 does today. In the 2000s, the U.S. dismantled thousands of nuclear weapons, and the uranium from those nuclear weapons was actually given to the U.S. Navy to power their nuclear submarines and aircraft carriers. Today, Y-12 stewards that store of uranium as well. Y-12 is designated as both the Uranium Center of Excellence and the Lithium Center of Excellence for the U.S. Those are two elements that are critical for nuclear weapons. Y-12 today, if you ask any of their employees, they'll tell you that what they work on is national security. And what they mean by that is that they steward the U.S. arsenal of nuclear bombs and missiles. They make sure that they're modernized, they make sure that they're up to date, but they don't build them from beginning to end. And in fact, Y-12 was never designed to do that. Y-12 was built in 1943 as part of the Manhattan Project. You may have seen the Oscar-winning film Oppenheimer, and you wouldn't have heard the name Y-12 said, but you would have heard the name Oak Ridge. And that's because Oak Ridge was built as a federal government town to enrich uranium for the first nuclear weapon used in warfare that was dropped on Hiroshima and helped end World War II. Y-12 enriched uranium for that bomb, but Y-12 doesn't enrich uranium today. Y-12 stopped enriching uranium at the end of the Cold War. During the Cold War, Y-12's mission changed slightly to helping build parts for thermonuclear weapons and helping build out the U.S. arsenal of nuclear weapons. At its height, that arsenal included more than 31,000 weapons. Today, the U.S. arsenal of nuclear bombs and missiles is just over 5,000. And every single one of those bombs and missiles has parts that were either created processed, modernized, or stewarded by Y-12. So Y-12 remains critical to the U.S. stockpile of nuclear weapons. That means that Y-12 has always been a site of controversy. Peace activists have always taken issue with what goes on at Y-12, and perhaps the most famous example of a peace protest at Y-12 came in 2012 when three Catholic activists, including an 82-year-old nun, broke into the fences at Y-12 to protest what goes on there. Now that doesn't mean that all of the work that happens at Y-12 is in support of the U.S. stockpile of nuclear weapons. That's perhaps the primary and most important mission of Y-12, but Y-12 also stewards the Navy's stockpile of uranium, and they also support global nuclear non-proliferation efforts by helping secure uranium from other countries and keep it safe from theft and terrorism threats. Y-12 also does expansive training for medical professionals who have to interact with radioactive materials, for instance, in cancer treatment or radiology. Y-12 today has a diverse set of missions. It's not the site that it was in the Manhattan Project. Though many of its buildings date back to the Manhattan Project, several of those buildings are being decommissioned and they're coming down. The skyline at Y-12 is changing dramatically and it will continue to change for many decades to come. Most notably, Y-12 is at work on a multi-billion dollar new uranium processing facility. It's been several decades in the making, and it's expected to be finished by the end of this decade. That uranium processing facility will update a lot of the work Y-12 does and move its uranium processing facility out of a decrepit and, frankly, dangerous Manhattan Project building. Several of those buildings are coming down, and Y-12 is changing, but its national security legacy lives on, and the controversy of what goes on there lives on even today in Oak Ridge.